five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, so our project is on finding new sustainable biofuels. Essentially, biofuels are an eco-friendly substitute to the fossil fuels that we use, such as gasoline or diesel. They can be made from animal materials or plant materials through modern refinement processes that are carbon neutral, meaning they have no net greenhouse gas emissions. The process of turning crops into, bi into biofuels is called the biodiesel cycle, and a simple version of it is shown in this like, uh, diagram. Okay. Currently, biofuels are most often used as automotive fuels, as such as ethanol or biodiesel, but these fuels are these fuels allow trucks and cars to run cleaner by producing less CO2 because they absorb more carbon dioxide than we produce. Um, today, microbes are used as a catalyst in the production of biofuels. Catalyst is a substance that increases the chemical reaction without any permanent chemical changes. If microbes help, we are able to access energy from natural materials and convert them to biofuels. Why our project? So both of us have an interest in automotive vehicles, therefore we knew we wanted to have a project that relates to the automotive world. This led us to choosing the topic of biofuels as it is a relatively new fuel being com as compared to gasoline and it's still like in its infancy, meaning that there's not a lot of research so far that's gone into it. Um, and it also produces less emissions than gasoline does. As you can see in this graph, automotives that using renewable energy are more expensive than those that use gasoline, so they're less accessible to the public. And here are like, like, so basically how this works is these are like two comparable cars, and then it shows that like the one on the left is gonna be the uh, renewable energy car, in this case it's electric vehicles, and then in the light blue it's the regular gas vehicles. We chose five different plant materials to find which is most efficient. We chose peanut shells, peach fish, corn husks, coconuts, and soybeans. We chose these plants because they are all commonly grown throughout the United States in varying regions, which would help with the mass production of biofuels. We did this because if successful, we could be able to produce the crops with biofuel in any part of the country. Corn husks and peach or peanut shells are specifically chosen because they are often not used as much as the comments and stuff. All right, so for our project, we'll be collecting data with um, the microbes that are in the mud that we're gonna be collecting by a nearby river as they consume the nutrients from the mud and the plant materials that we add to the mud. They're gonna convert these nutrients into electrons. Then they're gonna deposit the electrons onto this anode here using three different transfer types. The first being a mediated transfer, which uses biomolecules to shuttle the electrons from like their bodies to the anode. And then a nanowire transfer, so basically they like grow these little tails and then like stick those onto the anode to transfer the electrons. And then a direct transfer, meaning that they just touch their bodies to the anode and that's how they transfer electrons. If the plant material that we choose has the ability to give more energy to the microbes, and they'll have a higher amount of electrons to deposit onto the anode. Then they travel from this wire up to the blinker board. The electrons travel up this wire to the blinker board where they power the electrons. Once the electrons are powered, the electrons are gonna travel back down the wire into the cathode where they're gonna interact with protons and oxygen that are in the cathode to create more water. Then this process basically resets itself and keeps going. In a, a uh, mud watt fuel cell, which is what we're using, this process happens over a trillion times a second. We'll be measuring the electrical output of the mud watt fuel cell using a voltmeter that's built into this blinker board. Okay. Based on the data that we found and the caloric value of our plant materials, we believe that peanuts will be the most efficient plant material that we tested for making biofuels. Currently, the most popular plant material for making biofuels is corn. Therefore, peanuts being native to the southeastern part of the United States allows us to work towards a larger and more diverse group of plant material in the future of biofuels. So our goal for researching this project is to determine which plants or combination of plants can produce the largest amount of energy. This will help us determine what other types of plants can be used to start new biofuel production. 
Discovering more efficient biofuels allows us to produce less carbon or even netting zero in carbon dioxide production. Producing less carbon dioxide is much less harmful to our environment, which is needed in its current deteriorating state. That's the end.